good afternoon everybody and welcome here to Spartan Raceway as we get ready for race number 13, the final race of the first half of the regular season here today in the Season 7 Snickers Cup Series. Getting ready here for a 40 lap event, we've had two exciting races, one in the Truck Series race where Trent Dunham picked up the win and the Mobile Cup Series event where James Qualls went to victory lane for the first time in his career. Will we see something similar like that happen today? I don't know, but I can't wait to find out. Getting ready today for the running of the Carnation Instant Breakfast 400 and Harrison Lankford sits on the pole position for today's race. Now Lankford, I don't remember where he finished in the Oreo Truck Series race, but I do know he ended up finishing top 10 in the Mobile Cup Series race here. So Lankford's got a big opportunity here to maybe become the first two-time winner in the Snickers Cup Series here in Season 7. He comes in 16th in the points stage. He's a former winner this season back at Thornton and He's locked into the All-Star race, so things seem to be going really well for that rookie Petty Enterprises uh, Dodge team as he'll start on the pole position alongside of the Roush Fenway Ford of William Duncan. Now, on the flip side, William Duncan was a former chaser when he was with Roush Fenway Racing last year. Duncan this year, however, is 28th in the point stance, has really been struggling, but a good qualifying spot could get him to turn his season around. Alongside of Dylan Young in row four, Two there, that I believe is the uh, Charles Sanford machine. Now you'll notice that it's got like the Toyota colors and everything. I do have to give a little disclaimer before we get started. Uh, I did find out I had something corruptible in my Enter 2003 game. I had to make some changes of deleting some cars, and unfortunately, when I did this event, I had some of those cars that I deleted in that list. So I'm going to say right now, Charles Sanford, Kyle Corbett, and Dylan Poteet. You guys are running the uh, default Chevy and Toyota schemes that uh, just have the numbers on them and have the uh, Toyota and Chevy uh, look to them. I apologize for that. I tried to go back in and see if I could get the TGAs on them, but the files are no longer there. So for this race only, you guys are running those uh, primary looking schemes. I do apologize for that, but uh, you're still in the race though, so uh, hopefully it's not going to be too bad a problem for you guys but Corbett I, be uh, I believe that's Corbett is that Corbett or is that Sanford let's find out real quick uh that's Sanford the Daytona 500 winner he's going to start off in the third position now Sanford um I actually looked back through the uh, history books and it's quite interesting because three out of our six Daytona 500 winners the season that they won the Daytona 500 they also ended up making the chase Sean Henley or not Sean Henley I'm sorry James McLeod was one of them uh, another one of them was Trent Whitney, and I believe the other one was Jacob Lawler. So, you know, Charles Sanford in good company here, and he's been actually finishing really well in the past few weeks. Had a strong run last week at Pukakoe. He's up to seventh in the point standings, looking for maybe his second win of the season. Alongside of him, Dylan Young, who was a two-time winner last year. His last win, of course, coming at Zenjoltis, the season finale. Has yet to go to victory lane yet this year, and he comes into this race 32nd in points. Looking for a good run here today in the Penske Germain Fords. As a matter of fact, we've actually found out that uh, the uh, 2 and the 22 are switching to just Penske racing for the second half of the regular season. Germain racing is no longer going to be a part of their program, so that might make a change as well. The points coming into this race is the usual faces up in front. The Bob Jones, Ian Dunham, Noah Hart battle continues to rage on that we saw take place last week at Puka Kobe. It's going to roll over here today. Bob Jones is still the points leader, though, by 10 points over Ian Dutta. And then, Ian Dutta is only two points ahead of Noah Hart. There's only 12 points separating the top three coming into this race. Danny Wells is fourth in points. Chris Washer, fifth. Megan Atkins is sixth with Charles Sanford, seventh. Cody Lamas, eighth. Cole Daly, ninth. And Richard Johnson completes the top ten. As a matter of fact, it's going to be a good battle for drivers trying to get inside the top ten as well because Cole Daly, Richard Johnson, Ralph Mason, Andrea Erickson, Austin LaPlante, Joshua Collard, last week's winner, and James Silverfox. That is 9th through 15th in points. They're separated by only 6 points coming into this race. That's going to be a good battle, too, for drivers trying to get a spot inside the top 10 in points. Time, though, to get these cars rolling off. The pace car is going to leave this 42-car field. And while it does that, we are going to show you a couple of drivers to maybe keep an eye on during the course of today's race. And one of them, I would have to say, would have to be the guy we just talked about, Richard Johnson. Starting up there in the ninth position today, Petty Enterprises has been on quite a streak as of late. Lightford's gone to victory lane, Collard went to victory lane last week, and Richard Johnson's been consistent enough to have his 93. 
three in the tenth position in points. So Richard Johnson, keep your eyes on him, as I'm sure he's going to try and do something here today to maybe get himself into victory lane. Another driver that I think we should keep a very close watch on. We know that Dodge has been on a bit of a streak as of late, and Chris Washer has been doing very, very well here in that number ten machine. We're going to have to see how he does as he is fifth in the point look for his second win of the season. As we're getting ready to go to green, the other driver I was going to say keep an eye out for was Jessica Shelton in the 29. Now, Shelton's having a very difficult season so far, but she finished very well here in the Mobile Cup Series race yesterday. Keep an eye on her to maybe make some moves up towards the front of the field. She's starting way at the back. And then Daniel Day I just saw get spun around right at the rear of the field. The 24 has been looped, coming off of two. And that will bring out a yellow. Yellow flag waving. Whoa, one car was riding the wall. That was Kyle Corbett back there. He was literally riding the wall. Martin Truex seen it. And he is stuck on the safer barrier. Kyle Corbett, that's the 56 car, even though he's not running the Napa colors, but he is involved. Looks like Cody Lamas got involved as well. Eighth in points. There's Daniel Day. And is everybody else okay? Well, there's one car on pit road, or at least on the apron. Looking like he's coming to pit road. Oh, that's Michael Norman in the three. Was running in the 13th position, and he's going to come down and make a pit stop here. And I think he may be the only one. So a little bit of interesting strategy on the part of Michael Norman's team. Bringing that three car down here early on. Top five are going to be Harrison Langford, Charles Sanford, Noah Hart, Danny Wells, and Richard Johnson. Let's jump back, take a look at a replay of what happened. First, the spin by Daniel Day coming out of two, and then the wreck with, involving Kyle Corbin, and I believe his teammate Cody Lamas coming out of turn four. And as I said, this was right at the rear of the field, and it's going to be Nick Barney. He's going to get into the left rear of the 24 coming off of this corner. Oh, Austin the Plant also got into Dylan Poteet and turned him around just a little further up. We'll jump back there in just a minute and see what happened there. Just want to see if the 24 was able to save it and not hit the wall. It looked like he didn't really have any damage when I saw him running there under that pace lap. And yeah, turns the thing around. Does not hit the, top, the, the safer barrier on the inside. And continues on. And there's Dylan Poteet now. It looks like he may have actually gotten hit by somebody. And I'm not sure who it was. Let's jump to helicopter view. That should be a good camera angle. Oh, actually, t uh, TV number one is going to be a good one, too. It was the Excedrin Chevrolet of Austin the Plant who turned him around. The question is, where did he get the damage in the driver's side door? Well, it looks like it could have actually come from LaPlante again. So LaPlante getting a bit of damage there. And there you can see the damage on the, on the 8 of the 78. Uh, that was from Austin the Plant. But Poti was able to continue on, and so too was Austin the Plant, and so too was Daniel Day. Now let's take a look at this incident here. Oh, they almost, looks like they're going to try going four wide. Two of the Everham Mayonnaise uh, Motorsports cars, and two of the Michael Waltrip Racing cars. Cody Lamas and Kyle Corbett drew Austin and Joshua Collard, and then Ian Dutta in there as well. And Cody's going to slide up into Drew Austin. Austin then slides up into Corbett. And then just kind of the two of them sandwich the nine and up into the fence they go. And look at the 56. It's going to go up and onto his side. And Martin Truex it on the wall there. Bob Jones gets a piece of it there in the 27, the points leader. Don't know how extensive the damage is on the Quaker State Chevy, but he got a little piece of that. Drew Austin, we know, was involved as well. And then up ahead there, Cody Lamas spinning out. But I think everybody got through. Silver Fox goes by, Pichu, London, Citadino. There goes Chris Washer, Mary Cole, trying to make her way by. Oh, she actually does get a piece of it there, does the 18. The pink M&M's Toyota, Joe Gibbs Racing, is involved. And there is Kyle Corbett, stuck on the safer barrier, had to teleport to Pitt Road. That's a tough break for him. Corbett has really, uh, he's been hitting some bad luck in the last few weeks. Down to 17th in the point standings is or a winner from Auto Club. And uh, looks like his luck just continues to not really get any better here as he's up and onto the fence here literally on the second lap of today's race. 
Getting ready to go back to Green Flag Racing on lap 6 of 40. Harrison Langford leads the way. Charles Sampha runs second. Third place, Noah Hart. Fourth place is Danny Wells. Richard Johnson fifth. Sixth, William Duncan. Cole Daly seventh. Levi McIntyre up in eighth. Dylan Young ninth. And Jake Cole completes top ten. Go a little further back. Sean Galligan is eleventh. Dylan Schwalberg twelfth. Kyle Matthews runs thirteenth. Fourteenth, Anthony McCurry. And fifteenth is Ralph Mason. Then it's Sean Henley, Trent Dunham, Joshua Collard, last week's winner. Ian Dutta. And Jacob Lawler, that is the top 20. Now, we know that uh, Noah Hart is running up inside the top five. There we see Ian Dutta running in 19th place. But Bob Jones, you know, we got a little piece of that incident, but he's still running. He's in the 23rd position and did not come down pit road under that caution flag. So apparently the damage not that bad on the 27. As we're back to green flag racing once again. Harrison Langford has a rear deck lid full of Charles Sanford, who is right on his back bumper, did not let him get away. It looks like he's going to take a peek to the inside. Meanwhile, Danny Wells, he gets the inside of Noah Hart for third, and oh, Liam Duncan nearly got turned there by Cole Daly. Nice save by the 99. Two-car breakaway up at the front of the field right now, though. It's Langford and Sanford. Langford now starting to open a little bit of daylight, and the caution flags out again. Caution flag waving. This must have been an incident in turn three because the flagman started waving the yellow just when the cars came to the start-finish line. Oh, and it's John Cittadino this time, along with James Silverfox, Cody Lamas, and Drew Austin involved in yet another incident. And oh boy, there's a whole pile up trying to come to pit road. Look out. Oh, Charles Jackson is flipping. London is in it. Washer's got damage. Mary Cole is involved. Kyle Corbett's got front-end damage. Bob Jones, the points leader, now has a buckle on his hood. Looks like a buckle on Jessica Shelton's hood. She gives a punt to Mary Cole. Look at Jax's car, all crunched up. His teammate, Chris Washer, up ahead, all crunched up. Joshua Michaels has got damage on the rear of his car. And Dutta at Joshua Collard. They've got damage. Jake Cole's got damage. So we'll move up here to the leader, Harrison Langford, and I believe... Nick Barney has decided to stay out. Gas and go. Langford is gone. Danny Wells off. Richard Johnson off. There's Duncan and Cole Daly. That's the top five leaving Pitt Road. And Nick Barney escaping all that mayhem. He will cycle around, I believe, as the leader. But let's take a look at a replay of what just happened. Well, here's a look at it. James Silverfox slides way off of turn number two. He could get up into the Cody Lamas car turn him down towards the apron both of them were able to keep hold of their race cars but then they're going to come back onto the racetrack here in turn number three and it'll be in a four wide situation with John Cittadino Drew Austin and that's not going to work out James just not does not really let Cody back up in line and all four of them up and into the fence and look at the Drew Austin car holy Toledo up and into the air and down on top of the 41's roof and then begins the barrel roll. Man, Drew Austin's been on the receiving end of a lot of wild rides in the past few weeks. And there you have it. Man. Lamas, who comes in 8th in points. Silver Fox, who comes in 15th in points. Citadino, who's been trying to work his way up through the standings. 26th in points. And Drew Austin, who's just been having a really dismal season. 31st in points. All involved there. As so we're under the caution flag for the second time today, we'll update you on the drivers that may have retired due to that big pileup coming to pit road as well. But it looks like we can safely say all of those four drivers are going to probably be retiring from today's event. We'll get ready to go back to green flag racing. Nick Barney completely off pit sequence with everybody else. He did not come down pit road under that yellow flag. We're a quarter of the way through this race, and we already have some drivers back behind the wall, including... The following, James Silverfox, Drew Austin, Cody Lamas, John Cittadino, the two teammates from Everham Mayonnaise Racing, Chris Washer and Charles Jackson, they have gone behind the wall after they ex received extensive damage coming down pit road, getting involved in that big wreck. Uh, Charles Jackson's car, I think, actually barrel rolled. And then also Kyle Corbett, after what's been a very dismal start to his day, it will finally end with him going behind the wall in 36th place. Everybody else, though, Ian Dutta, Bob Jones, Jessica Shelton, all those drivers who received slight damage, Joshua Collard was another of them, all going to continue on, though, as we have a total of 36 or 35 drivers still on the racetrack as still 
on the lead lap. Green flag comes back out here on lap 11 of 40. Now Harrison Lankford did not take any tires under that pit stop but he does have enough fuel to go a little bit longer than Nick Barney, and now he's gonna immediately go to the inside and try to take the lead position back. And he's gonna make very quick work of the 16. Back to the lead goes the 45. Nick Barney falls back to second, and the caution flag's out again. Boy, we didn't have hardly any caution flags. We only had one caution flag coming into this race, and that was in the Truck Series event. But now we are under our third caution here in the Snickers Cup Series race. And this one, it's like it may involve a couple of Hendrick teammates. Daniel Day and Austin LaPlante. As, oh, look out, they're spinning, coming to pit road again. Sean Henley, Jacob Lawler. And there's some skid marks heading into pit road too, just ahead there. I believe McIntyre's got some damage on the right side of his 17. Dougie Shears coming to pit road. Nick Barney coming to pit road along with William Duncan. A lot of drivers using some different pit strategy here. It's going to be interesting it's coming down to about 10 to go. See just exactly who's going to have what it takes to get to the end because apparently with a longer event, these drivers are trying to compensate for it with uh, pulling out some fuel mileage here. Some fuel mileage strategy, but we're under the caution. It's Petty Enterprises 1-2 right now with Harrison Lankford, Richard Johnson. Let's jump back, take a look at the replay. We'll put us under the yellow for the third time today here at Spartan. Another incident again near the rear of the field. This time looks like it's going to be almost a five wide situation. And Dylan Poteet's going to make the contact. He turns Mary Cole down into Austin LaPlante. Interesting that he targeted Austin LaPlante because LaPlante was the one that turned Poteet not too long ago. Then they just all start domino affecting. The 48 finally comes down in front of his teammate in the 24. Daniel Day going to slide down. This time he's not able to keep it from going into the wall. He does get the wall. And everybody else, though, continues on. Mary Cole continued on. Dylan Pote, Pichu London was able to keep away from all of that somehow. All that mayhem happened in front of him. There's Daniel Day and Austin LaPlante. They continued on as well. A couple of drivers did come down pit road under our last lap I saw coming down, including uh, Dylan Young and Kyle Matthews. So as we speak, more pit strategy coming into play. But let's head back now for the restart. Well, I'm trying to figure out why we keep going under the yellow flag, and from what I'm seeing, these drivers seem more keen to go three wide and even four wide than they were in trucks and mobile. Three wide, they're basically able to hang on to, but when they go four wide, that's a uh, little risky, and they have been going four wide quite a bit here today. But on the point still is Harrison Langford, undoubtedly the strongest car of the day. That's why he started on the pole position. Richard Johnson lines up second, Cold Alley third, Charles Sanford fourth, Noah Hart up here in fifth place, making quite a case for himself to maybe take the points lead, as he has not fallen outside the top five hardly at all day. Dylan Schwalberg sixth, seventh, Ian Dutta though. Then you got Sean Galgan eighth, ninth, Sean Henley, and Megan Atkins completes the top ten. So Ian Dutta running not too far behind Noah Hart, but I believe right now Noah Hart is one point ahead of Ian Dutta in the standings. And Bob Jones, I'm not sure where the 27 is restarting. Uh, 19th place. So right now, unofficially, Noah Hart is the points leader in the standings. As Langford's going to get away again, Cole Daly makes his move now into Richard Johnson. That's for second, but here comes Noah Hart in the new Audi. The, uh, uh, what's it called? The PlayStation All-Stars, I believe, is what the uh, sponsorship is on his car. He'll be running that scheme for the rest of the season. Noah Hart, uh, that was a ride that was actually put together for him for Season 8, but Noah Hart announcing he's moving over to the 81 next year, so instead of taking a junk in those cars, they decided they would put him in it for the rest of the season and then move him over to the 81 ride next season in Season 8. There's good battle raging here between these two, Cold Alley and Noah Hart. Both drivers inside the top 10 in points. And the yellow flag waves one more time here. That looks like an incident this time heading into turn number one. And I think Jake Rogers may have something to do with it. Ralph Mason's way back here too. He may have been collecting whatever it was. And oh wait a minute, pit stop's coming on here and everybody is coming down this time. Lankford, Daly, Noah Hart, Dutta, Johnson, Corbett, Schwallenberg, Atkins, Galligan, Henley, they're all coming. And will this be a tire stop now? Not many drivers have been making pit stops for tires under these yellows, and we're nearing the halfway point. You gotta think rubber's gonna come into play sooner or later. They can't keep going on fuel-only stops. 
Oh, Mary Cole sits on pit road. The hood completely crunched up on her M&M's Toyota. She must have been involved in whatever this incident was as well. We'll look back at a replay in just a minute. So we'll see what the Sprint Charger will do. Going for right sides at least here on his Dodge. Sanford doing the same. William Duncan as well. They're going to go for four-tire stop. Yes, they are. Four tires for the 45. Four tires for the 55. And Dougie Shears trying to beat Langford off pit road. I don't know if he did. That was a close battle. Really close off pit road between the 83 and the 45. But Dougie Shears may have gone with only a fuel strategy stop or something. Because he picked up a lot of spots. And Ian Dutta may have gotten out ahead of Langford as well. Nope, Langford's going to pass him. Now is Langford going to pass Dougie Shears? Yes, he is. So Dougie Shears came out second. Dutta third. Johnson fourth. And Nick Barney. Came out in fifth place. We're under the caution flag. Harrison Lightford leads us under yellow. Let's take a look and see what happened. Incident in turn one puts under the caution for the fourth time here today. Now let's take a look and see what happens here. Oh, looks like Ralph Mason up ahead turned the Daniel Day machine. Then Ralph comes up. He's going to side swipe the 22 of Jake Rogers. And both of them going to go into the wall. That's a tough break for Ralph. Came in 11th in points, was trying to work his way inside the top 10 in points. And Jake Rogers just been having a dismal season, 36th in points. He didn't want to get collected in this. And then there's Daniel Day, and watch carefully. Oh, actually, I think it, the incident's already happened. Yeah, you got to watch here, just barely through the smoke. Mary Cole coming into this. And I don't know if she even saw the 22 through all that plume of smoke, but she runs straight into the back of the 22 of Daniel Day. And heavy, extensive damage on her 18 car. As you can clearly see right there, look at that. That car is crunched. And Mary Cole looks like her day may be over here today at Spartan. Yeah, black smoke erupting from underneath the pink M&M's Toyota. And her day undoubtedly is over. So, looks like a four-car incident. Mary Cole, Daniel Day, Ralph Mason, Jake Rogers put us under the yellow here for the fourth time today. Let's head back now for green as we are now nearing the halfway point in today's event. We'll be ready to go back to green flag racing past the halfway point on lap 22 of 40. Give us a total of 19 to go here today. Maybe, just maybe we can get into a bit of a green flag run, but we've been under four cautions so far here today. Langford sits on the point still. Second place will be Dougie Shears after an amazing pit strategy move there. First time we've seen him up inside the top five all day. Ian Dutton now up to third. Fourth place is Richard Johnson with Nick Barney back in fifth now. Cole Daly sixth. Seventh place will be Dylan Schwallenberg. Seventh, Megan Atkins. Eighth place is Sean Henley with ninth place being Noah Hart and clean the top 10, I believe, is Andrea Erickson now in the 42. Driver lines up there on the inside line, a lap down. That's the Daniel Day car. Mary Cole out of the race. Dylan Young has gone behind the wall as well. Don't know what has happened on the 20 or the on the two machine, but Dylan Young has taken his car behind the wall. The green flag is out. Harrison Langford with a new challenger behind him in Dougie Shears. And Dougie going to try and get the run here to the inside already. Let's see if he can get him into turn three. As I look back there through turn two, looks like everybody is okay for now. Can we complete a green flag lap? That would awfully be awfully nice. Huh? Where are you guys parked? Oh, didn't even see it. And it looks like we're going to do it. Yes, we do complete a green flag lap here. Yes. Now the question is, are we going to go clean and green to the end of this race? And if we do, that's a big uh, thing that these drivers are going to have to maybe contend. We've seen them doing a lot of pit strategy here in the first half of this race. Now it's basically do or die time. Did they pick the right combination of coming down pit road? There is, of course, that possibility that we still could go under a yellow flag. As we watch the battle for the points lead continue to rage on, Ian Dutta currently up in the second position at the moment. Noah Hart, he's back there a little bit further. There he is. He's in eighth place. He's got to catch up and pass, uh, Noah, uh, pass Ian Dutta and have at least two positions between himself and in Dutta to even be in contention for the points lead. And then Bob Jones, whoops, hit the wrong button. Bob Jones, there he is. 
31st right now and damaged. So I would say the battle for the points lead is gonna be between Ian Dutta and Noah Hart. And that is though providing that Bob Jones, even with a damaged car, has not worked out some kind of pit strategy to be around at the end. Right now though, Harrison Lankford has opened up a teeny bit of distance between himself and Dougie Shears, about a two car length advantage. Then Cole Daly has now moved by in Dutta for a position. That is going to help Noah Hart out to be able to close in on Ian Dutta for the points lead. That now I believe, as Noah Hart's actually going underneath Richard Johnson for position now. This move, if he makes it happen, that would put him only five points behind Ian Dutta in the standings. And he does complete the pass on Richard Johnson. He's now only two positions actually behind Ian Dutta, so now he's only four points back in the point standings. And he may end up getting a chance to battle no, uh, the Ian Dutta car because look what Nick Barney's doing. Opening up the opportunity as he's now to the inside for the fourth position off the 66. And look who's closing. It's Noah Hart in that 47 Audi. So this battle for the points lead may not be over yet. As Noah starts to close in, Charles Sanford right behind him, and Nick Barney looks like he may complete the pass here. Well, not yet. And now Sanford's gonna stick Noah Hart in the high side. He's gonna go for what would be, I believe, the sixth position there. So now the 66 and the 47 get kicked up to the high line, and they're gonna start losing a couple spots. Oh, but wait a minute, Noah Hart. Whoa, I thought he might try and make it three wide underneath the 66 car, which has now been able to get back to the inside line. Well, not for long. Sanford now comes down to the bottom, looking for the top position. Or not the top position, but that would be uh, for fifth place. And look who's coming to the inside line now. Oh boy. These two drivers, they're not only battling for a spot on the racetrack, they're battling for a spot atop the point standings. And Dutta Noah Hart running currently, I believe that's in sixth and seventh place at the current moment. And they are one behind the others. This could get interesting. Sanford started to work his way up now. He got by Ian Dutta, he got by Noah Hart. Now he's going by Nick Barney. That is for the uh, fifth position now. Or, or no, that's actually for fourth. And another guy who's starting to slowly reel in somebody is Cole Daly. He's starting to reel in the Red Bull Toyota for second place. That being Dougie Shears, as there's a gap from Lankford back to Shears, and then a gap from Shears back to Cole Daly. Then Sanford, Nick Barney, and Noah Hart has gotten around Ian Dutta. So now it's only one point separating those two atop the point stands, according to our live points. Danny Wells, fourth in the standings. He's up to eighth now. Sean Henley's up there in ninth, and tenth place now is Richard Johnson. So he's got a rear deck lid full of Andrea Erickson, Mega Atkins, and Dylan Schwallenberg. Has Bob Jones made up any progress? He was 31st last time we checked. He's 29th now, he has made up some ground, but not enough to keep the points position atop the standings, but still a ways to go here. Lankford though, ticking away laps, as there's gonna be a total of seven to go now, six when they hit the stripe. And Lankford looking very good right now, the strongest car of the day, no doubt, started on the pole. Lost the lead to a couple of drivers as they tried using some pit strategy, Nick Barney was one of them, and uh, Trying to remember who the other one was. Can't think of it. But he's been up inside the top five all day. I don't think that 45 has been outside the top five at all. And a strong, strong car today. And he could, he, with, right now, keep in mind, oh, Dougie Shears coming to pit road. That pit strategy is going to have him have to pit a little earlier here. So that might call into question whether these guys are going to have to pit. But Langford has an opportunity to be the first two-time winner this season in Snickers Cup Series competition. And there's gonna be five to go now. It's gonna be interesting to see, will the 45 dive for pit road this time? Dougie Shears, I believe, went with a fuel-only strategy under that last caution. He had to come down pit road much sooner than these drivers did. Can these drivers stretch it? Right now, top five, I don't think, have come down pit road. Langford's still out there. There's Dougie Shears completing his service. Nick Barney, Noah Hart there, and now Danny Wells underneath of Ian Dutta. That's gotta be putting a smile on the face of Noah Hart. 
And now pit stops for the leaders. Lankford's coming. Oh, Lankford, don't overdrive like Pokey did in the truck series race. Can he get to pit road? No, he missed it. Lankford missed pit road. Ian Dutta decided to stay out. Sanford is in, though. Nick Barney has come in. Danny Wells, Andrea Erickson, Sean Henley, they've all come in. Lankford missed pit road. He'll have to come back in this next time around, I would assume, as here comes Ian Dutta. There's Levi McIntyre ahead of him. He's on the tail end of the lead lap. Ian Dutta going to back it down. He'll make it to pit road safely. Here comes Richard Johnson. Here comes Megan Atkins. Lankford now coming this time. So too is Cole Daly. Trent Dunham's got damage on the back of his car. Don't know where that came from. Bob Jones coming to pit road now. Oh, Jake Rogers. Is he going to miss pit road? Oh, the 22 does. Yes. Joshua Collard misses pit road. Jake Cole misses pit road. And I think the lead, who is the leader? Might be Dougie Shears. No, it's Michael Norman with the white flag waving. And remember, Michael Norman came down and pitted all the way back on lap two. He was the only driver to pit. He may actually have enough to make it the rest of the way here. Through turns three and four, he's not coming to pit road. Michael Norman's going to be the one to roll the dice and come out big with pit strategy today. He's going to pick up his first win of the season. He wins the Carnation Instant Breakfast 400 today at Spartan Raceway. We didn't even talk about Michael Norman all day. The only reason we did was he came down pit road all by himself way back at the beginning of this race. But somehow, someway, he had enough fuel to get to the end, and Michael Norman picks up his first win of the season in that three car. What a victory today for him. Who was second? Charles Sanford was second. Looks like all the other drivers came down pit road. They're going to finish inside the top ten and everything, but... Michael Norman was the only driver who did not pit there in those closing stages, and he hung on and he wins today. What a victory. His first win since Talladega, race number uh, 20, er, 35. Yeah, race 35 of season six. That had already clinched him a spot in the All-Star race, but he'll be in the All-Star race with this win as well. What a victory for that team. And I believe that's the first win of the season. For m, m Man. Nicely done job for pit of pit strategy there for Michael Norman. It certainly paid off. He'll get the win. Second place was Charles Sanford. He'll stay in the top 10 in points. Nick Barney. Strong run for him today. He was one of those drivers who actually did some uh, pit strategy today. He gets a solid third place run. Sean Henley continues his streak of good runs in fourth. Fifth place in Dutta. He finishes one spot ahead of the Noah Hart machine. Now, we're going to have to find out. But if... Bob Jones did not finish well enough. Ian Dutta would be the new points leader by three points over Noah Hart. But Danny Wells, he's going to get seventh today. Andrea Erickson may move back inside the top ten in points with the eighth place run today. Megan Atkins, she'll stay in the top ten with ninth. And Dougie Shears ended up coming down with a fuel-only strategy under the last pit stop. And then here had to pit a few laps before everybody else did. And he is going to still salvage a top ten finish of tenth place here today. Good run for him. Now, where did Bob Jones officially finish? 27th for the 27. So that means that he will lose the points lead heading into the second half of the regular season. New points leader Ian Dutta in the 66 by a total of uh, three points over Noah Hart. So that's going to be a good battle continuing on here. I don't know where Bob Jones is going to be in all this. And Danny Wells with his run today of seventh may end up making it a four-man fight atop the point standings lead. Maybe even Megan Atkins with her run today too could be up in the Hunt as well as well as Sanfer. So we'll have to see if that will be the case. A couple drivers actually were running well. Where did they finish? Cole Daly for one. Wow, he finished way down, a lap down at 22nd. Don't know what happened to him. Also, Harrison Langford, the dominant car of the day, one lap down in the 18th position. So don't know what happened to him exactly either. And how about Jake Rogers? Remember he got spun around by uh, Ralph Mason? He's going to finish in 13th today. The first car one lap down. What a comeback finish for that 22 team. And Ralph actually finishes in 19th here today as well. Where did Joshua Collard, last week's winner, finish? Oh, he finished a lap down in 23rd. 
So don't know where he's going to be in the points after today's race. And Austin the Plant, 12th in points. I don't think he'll make his way inside the top 10 standings. 26th place run for his Chevrolet today as well. So some drivers did really well today, especially Michael Norman with that pit strategy, but some drivers didn't. And as we said, there was only, what, uh, six points separating 8th through 15th in the standings. So we're going to maybe see a lot of shuffling through that area as far as maybe a few new faces up inside the top 10. As we pack it all up now, folks, and we head to All-Star Race Weekend in Boston, Massachusetts at M&M's Super Speedway. Hope you'll tune in for that. We're going to have testing sessions, our Snickers Shootout, Mobile Open, and Oreo Open, and, of course, our three All-Star Races. All going to be coming live to you here on the SJ Sports Channel. Hope you'll be tuning in for those. Congratulations once again to Michael Norman on their first win of Season 7 as they take the Carnation Instant Breakfast 400 here today at Spartan Raceway. I think this is definitely a track that's made a case for itself to maybe be back on the schedule next season as it brought about some really great racing all weekend long. Hope you guys enjoyed this race. If you did, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe to become part of the crew today. Here comes your official finishing results, overall points, and rookie points heading into next week's race, which of course is going to be after the All-Star Race weekend. But this is Seth Cole signing off. Thank you for sticking around for the first half of the regular season. Hope to see you for the second half after the All-Star Race weekend. As you've been watching production of the Offline Racing at its best.